you are watching silchair and talents hello everyone and welcome to my channel in this video i'm starting a lesson from class 12 history rebels and the raj this is theme 11 the revolt of 1857 and its representations so in this chapter we will be studying about advent of the revolt of 1857 pattern of the rebellion then award in revolt then objectives of the revolt and repression of the revolt and the last is the images of the revolt so let us begin with the advent of the revolt on the 10th may 1857 the sepoys in the cantonment of the merit broke out in the mutiny it started with native infantry cavalry and then to the city the sepoys captured the bells of arms uh, it is a store room in which weapons are kept. So where the arms and ammunition were kept, they attacked white people, government buildings like the record office, jail, court, post offices, treasuries, etc. The telegraph line to the Delhi was also cut. After which the sepoys arrived in Delhi. The sepoys after arriving the gates of the Red Fort on 11th May 1857, and uh, now they directly entered Delhi and people also joined them. The rich people of Delhi were attacked and looted and Europeans were killed. Now surrounded by the sepoys, Bahadur Shah had no other options but to support them. Now exactly what happened was is this people they need a leader. So for the search of the leader they went to Bahadur Shah. Now being uh, the king he had no other options but to support them. The revolt thus acquired a kind of legitimacy because it could uh, now be carried on in the name of the Mughal Emperor. As more people came to know about the support of Bahadur Shah, events took place rapidly. Cantonment after cantonment in the Gangetic Valley and some of the west of Delhi rose in mutiny too. The year of 1857 has a great importance in the Indian history. It witnessed the occurrence of the great event which provided a new momentum and a, a new direction to the struggle against colonial rule. The events came to be known as the Great Uprising of 1857. It also came to be known as the First War of Independence. So now we are on to our first uh, subtopic, this is Pattern of the Rebellion. So now if one analyzes the outbreak of the revolts in chronological order, it would appear that the news of mutiny spread like wildfire and one cantonment after another took up arms against British. The sequence of the event in every cantonment followed a similar pattern. The beginning of mutiny. This is the first sub part of the pattern of rebellion. So here we will see that the sepoys in the cantonment of Merit broke out into mutiny in the afternoon of 10th May 1857. They seized and robbed British uh, treasury and weapons. They attacked government buildings including the jails, treasury, telegraph office, record rooms, bungalows, etc. Records were also burnt and everything and everybody which was related to white men were targeted. On 11th May, sepoys arrived in Delhi and killed a large number of Europeans. The rich of Delhi were also attacked and looted. After seizing Delhi, they declared Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah as their leader. After the involvement of the ordinary people, the targets of the attack widened. Moneylenders and the rich became the target in major towns like Lucknow, Kanpur and Bareilly. Their houses were also looted and destroyed. The mutiny in the Sepoy quickly took uh, the role of rebellion lines of communication so with the topic itself we can relate the importance of this with the revolt of 1857 we know that the revolt took place at different places at the same time there was similarity in the pattern of the revolt the reason behind this was its planning and coordinations sepoys or their agents moved from one station to another for planning and talking about the rebellion for example, in early May, the 7th Awad Irregular Cavalry refused to use the new cartridges and wrote to the 48th Native Infantry about this incident and awaited for their orders. 
The following example provides information about the organizing of the mutinies. Captain Hersey of the Awadh Military Police had been uh, given protection by his Indian subordinates during the mutiny. The 41st Native Infantry was also stationed at the same place. They argued with the Awadh Military Police that as they had killed all their white officers, the Awadh Military should uh, either put Hersey to death or hand him over to the 41st Infantry as prisoner. The military police refused to do either and it uh, was decided that the matter would be solved uh, by a panchayat composed of native officers drawn from each regiment. So it becomes uh, clear that some decisions were taken collectively. Now the fact that Sipois lived in lines and shared a common lifestyle was because many of them belong from the same caste and this also helped them to arrive at the collective decision. Leaders and the followers of the revolt. This is our next subtopic after lines of communication. So as we all know that uh, in any kind of activities, a war or maybe any kind of games or sports, we need a leader. So in order to fight the British, leadership and organization was also required. So the leaders came up from different parts of the country and first as we will see it is from Delhi. In Delhi the sepoys of Merat appealed the old Mughal uh, Emperor Bahadur Shah to accept the leadership of the revolt. Then after Delhi the uh, people or the sepoys reached Kanpur. In Kanpur the sepoys and the people of the town selected Nana Sahib the successor to Peshwa Baji Rao II as the leader. After which they move on to Jhansi or we can say some group reach Jhansi. In Jhansi, Rani Lakshmi Bai, the queen of Jhansi, assumed the leadership of the uprising. Then from Bihar, uh, Kuwar Singh, a local zamindar of Ar, became the leader of the revolt. Then from Awadh, the people elected Burgess Kadr the young son of the Nawab as their leader. Other places apart from uh, the Ranis, Rajas, Nawabs and Talukdars, ordinary men and women and religious men sometimes used to carry the messages of the rebellion. For example, there were some reports from Mirad uh, that stated that a uh, Fakir had appeared uh, riding on an elephant that the sepoys were visiting him frequently. In Lucknow, there were many religious leaders and self-styled prophets who uh, preached the destructions of British rule. Local leaders in some places. Now, the local leaders also emerged uh, and persuaded the peasants or zamindars and tribals to revolt. For example, Shah Mal. Uh, he became the leader of the Pargana uh, Barod in Uttar Pradesh. Then Guno, a tribal cultivator of Singhbhum in Churanagpur became a rebel leader of the coal tribals of the region. Then it's Malvi uh, Ahamdullah of Faziabad managed to keep the city free from British rule uh, for almost a year until his death. So from all this we can see that there were some leaders necessary for the revolt and thus they were very important. So after leaders and followers of the revolt our next topic is rumors and prophecies leading to revolt. Now these rumors and prophecies played a very important part in moving the people towards taking some actions. So some of the rumors and prophecies which led to the spread of revolt were the first one is the issue of cartridges. It was believed by sepoys that the cartridges of the Enfield rifles were coated with the fat of cows and pigs, uh, which corrupt the caste and religion of Hindus and Muslims. The British tried to explain to the sepoys, but the rumor spread like wildfire across the sepoy line of India. So the next uh, rumor was conspiracy to destroy the caste and religion. A news spread that the British had mixed the bone dust of cows and pigs into the floor that was sold in the market. Hence, Sipoy and the common people refused to touch the atta. 
It was feared that the British wanted to convert Indians to Christianity. It led men into actions and the prophecy that uh, uh, the Britain or the British rule uh, would come to an end on 23rd June 1857 on the centenary of the Battle of Palasi. The next rumor was the circulation of chapatis. There were reports from the parts of North India that chapatis were being distributed from village to village. A person would come at night and give a chapati to the watchman of the village and ask him to make five more and distribute to the next village and so on. The meaning and purpose of such distribution of chapatis was not clear but the people believed it to be a signal of an upheaval. So our next topic is why did the people believe in rumors? So there are various reasons for the acceptance of rumors by the common people. These were number one, the British adopted policies aiming at the reforming Indian society by introducing Western education. Now this Western ideas and Western institutions under the rule of Governor General Lord William Bentick. English medium schools, colleges and universities were opened and in the schools Western sciences and the liberal arts were taught. Laws were also established to abolish uh, customs like Sati in 1829 and to permit the remarriage of Hindu widows. The British started annexing the Indian states on issues like misgovernments or misgovernance and the refusal of recognized adoption. States like Awad, Chansi, Satara, etc. were annexed on the uh, same reasons. Once the territories were annexed, the British introduced their own methods of land sealing or settlement and land revenue collections. Socio-religious customs and patterns of land holdings and revenue patterns were destroyed and replaced by the system that were more or uh, which was more beneficial for the British, impersonal and alien and oppressive. The perception was further aggravated by the activities of Christian missionaries. So with this I came to the end of the first uh, topic that is pattern of rebellion. So after which uh, I'll be discussing the next topic that is Awad in revolt. But for that it will be in the next video. So till then keep studying, keep working hard and thank you for watching.